Disclaimer. Doll customization is not meant for children. These are art pieces created by experienced artists using potentially harmful materials and processes, including spraying aerosols, using knives, saws, flammable chemicals such as acetone, skin and eye irritants such as clays and glues with toxic fumes, and specialty paints and glosses identified as potentially carcinogenic. Destroying and upcycling figures and dolls is dangerous and causes irreversible damage to personal property. Therefore, viewer discretion is advised and younger audiences should not view this content without adult supervision. We recommend the YouTube Kids app instead for kid-appropriate content. Hiya! Welcome back to Little Reverie. It sure has been a while, hasn't it? My fall term started up, so I've been a bit busy lately. But now it's time to get back into the swing of things. And man, is it definitely time to get started on Mew Mint, the second Mew Mew to join the team. If you remember from my last Mew Mew video, I asked you guys to vote at the end for the next Mew Mew you would like to see. And Mew Mint won by a landslide. Some of you here and on Instagram had also requested doing them in the order that they appear. So I made a poll to see if the majority agreed. And that seemed to be the case. So, from here on out, the remainder of the series will be done in order. Coincidentally, Mew Mint is the second Mew Mew, so that worked out perfectly. As mentioned in the first Mew Mew doll repaint, the Mew Mews all have their DNA merged with endangered animals. In Mew Mint's case, that would be that of a blue lorikeet, a bird that is native to the French Polynesia and Cook Islands, and is currently labeled as vulnerable to being endangered. Once again, I'll be using Draculara as a base. To start things off, let's go ahead and hack off her hair, because she definitely won't be needing her current hair later. Now then, brew yourself some hot boiling water and pour it into a cup. Then dunk your doll's head in. If you have some water left over, let her stew in the cup for a while while you use what's left to make some nice herbal tea. Moments later. After a few minutes, the vinyl of the doll's head should be soft enough for you to yank it right off the neck peg. Taking some needle nose pliers, I go in to remove the remaining stubble of the hair. In other words, cue the grossest and yet most oddly satisfying part of doll customizing. My goodness, there's more glue in here than there is hair. Ugh, so gross. Now that we have done our hair removal surgery on our doll, let's remove her factory paint. Using 100% pure acetone and a cotton swab, I wipe off all of her factory paint. If you use scooping motions, you can get a lot of it up in one go. After I wipe off the majority of the paint, I go over her face one last time with a soaked tissue of acetone. Make sure you wash your face afterwards with warm soapy water. That way, our sealant has a better chance of adhering to the doll. Now, because this doll has some raised seams on her legs, I'm going to go in with an X-Acto knife to carve them down and then sand them. Ordinarily, this wouldn't matter if it were going to be covered, but because her legs will be seen, cleaning these up would be ideal. That and I'm also a little OCD when it comes to details. While I'm at it, I'm also going to trim down her ears. Since they will be very visible, we don't want our Mew Mint to have pointed ears. And since I'm in a sewing mood, before I go in with her face up, let's work on the outfit. For her outfit, I'll be using these two colors of cotton fabric, which now that I think about it, I used for Umi's outfit. The dark blue was perfect for Mint's wings and tail. But the Mint was a little too, um, Mint in color for me. Her dress is technically a robin egg blue, but this was the closest color that I had on hand. So sometimes you just gotta work with what you got. Her dress, though simple, did cause me quite a headache. I'm still very new to sewing, so I think I ended up making the whole process just a little more difficult than it really needed to be. I also used this fabric to make her armbands, choker, and the garter. The trim for all Mew Mew's outfits have this fluffy texture to them, 
So I'm going to use some dark blue flocking to get that effect. As for her gloves, just like with Ichigo's, I use epoxy sculpt to sculpt the gloves directly onto the doll. I only sculpt the opening of the gloves on the lower section of the forearm. That way I can still pose her hands. I then go in and paint the hand and glove, color matching the paint to her outfit. I did avoid painting her joint, opting to use pastels to ensure that the pigment would not rub off as easily. When it comes to her shoes, I just couldn't find any that would work well, not even as a base. So I went ahead and sculpted them directly onto the doll using more epoxy. I was so proud of how Ochako's shoes turned out in her video, so I figured I would go and do it again for Mint. I'll come back later to paint her shoes. Don't want any paint chipping off while handling. Alright, let's tackle some body mods. Mint will have not only a tail, but also wings. So this time, I'll be drilling three holes into the back of the doll. First, I go in and mark where the holes will be. Then I go in with my rotary tool. Yeah, that's safe. I also made her wings and tail using the same dark blue fabric that I used for the trim of her outfit. Before we attach her wings and tail permanently, let's get started on her face up. To start, I'm going to go in with some blushing. Just like with Ichigo, I try to mimic the anime's art style. I go in with a light brown watercolor pencil to get the shape of the eyes. Let's give her some eyebrows now, so she'll look a little less creepy. I first start off with some pastel, before defining the brows more with a watercolor pencil. I tried to give her that more confident and sophisticated expression that Mint has, while still maintaining a sweet look. I'm not sure if I got that through though. Eyebrows really communicate expressions, so I feel it's something I need to improve upon. Let's also go in and fill those eyes with some color. With each layer, I also build up the white highlights with my white pencil. If it starts to feel like you cannot build up any more pigment, or if your pencil keeps on slipping, then go ahead and spray the doll with another layer of MSC. With each layer, you can build up more color to help add saturation, and make those colors pop out even more. Rather than using a darker brown to darken the shape of the eyes and lashes, I decided to go in with a dark blue to keep in line with her blue color scheme. Also, cannot forget to define her lips. As I go, I keep on building up pigment wherever necessary.
For the highlights on her cheeks, I lift pigment off of my white pencil with a wet brush to apply small dots. Here I am just going in with various shades of grey to add some shadows to the upper part of the eyes. This helps to add definition and make them appear less flat. For the finishing touches, let's bring her eyes to life with some highlights. Lastly, I glaze her lips with a high gloss varnish. I also came very close to glossing her eyes as well, as I usually do, but I decided literally at the very last second not to. Now that her face up is done, I went ahead and glued her wings and tail in place with some epoxy glue. Time for her hair! I originally wanted to use alpaca locks for her hair, kind of like with Ichigo. Unfortunately though, I just couldn't seem to get the hair dark enough. In hindsight, I should have expected that pure white hair will not dye as dark as you would expect. Luckily, I had some viscose in just the right shade. Before I go in with a fiber, I have some planning to do. I first marked off different sections of her head. Next, taking some polymer clay, I created two round spheres that will become her hair buns. I also insert an eye pin to make attaching them a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and paint the scalp blue as well, just in case any fiber were to show through. I make sure not to cover up my guy lines as I go. Finally, adding her hair. I follow my guidelines and glue wefts toward the outside of each line. I'm a little out of focus here, but basically what I'm doing is I'm laying down some fiber to bulk up the hair once it's pulled back. I know she looks a little crazy at the moment, but bear with me. Once the glue has fully dried, I'm basically taking a segment of each weft and gluing it toward the center I had marked in my guideline. This will give the pulled back hair effect. I'm not going to worry too much on how the glued center looks as it'll be concealed in the end. Alright, one side's all done. Now to repeat all of that again on the right. With both sides done, I added her hair buns that I covered in viscose. I'm really happy with how this turned out so far. Now to work on her bangs. <laughs> so yeah, same story here. I started by gluing some wefts in the opposite direction, laying out some viscose below it, and then I folded it over when the glue dried. Here she is with her hair all done. To mimic the side of her hair, I lightly glued the tips. I'm really proud of how her hair turned out. Short and pulled back hair is definitely not my forte. 
For Mew Mint's Mintone Arrow, I first sculpted it using epoxy, and then went over it with paint. It did come out a little bit bigger than what I had wanted, and I struggled so much with trying to make it. But I am ultimately glad with how it turned out. Another thing I added to it was a ribbon on the back, to make it easier for the doll to hold. Remember this? Unlike Mew Ichigo's garter, due to Mint's boots being sculpted, I had to glue the garter around her leg, as opposed to sewing it closed and sliding it into place. I also glued her choker in place as well, along with a Mew pendant that I had made out of polymer clay and painted. Now, before we can call her finished, I painted her Mew mark which is located on her back. I forgot to record it with Ichigo, but I did paint her mark as well. And with that, Mew Mint is finally complete! Now we have two Mew Mews down. I really love how Mint turned out, and her and Miyuchigo look so cute with each other. Mew Lettuce will be the next Mew Mew. So until next time, may you all have a wonderful day. Bye bye!